Hey Toy Fans, Aaron here. I hope you're having a good day, and today thought we'd take a look at the 2004 Original Trilogy Collection release of Bespin Leia. Let's head to the table and check this one out. And here's a look at her on that Original Trilogy Collection card. Rebel Alliance symbol in the top left corner, letting you know that the figure you're getting is a good guy, or a good girl in this case. Big Star Wars logo with the silver racetrack running around the sides, and set inside that is an image of the scene that this character was seen in. So in this case, you got Cloud City. Of course, through the bubble, you see the figure with the included accessory. Left side of the card, you just got your Empire Strikes Back logo, since that's the movie the representation of Leia is from. And on the right side, you got her name, Princess Leia, the OTC number 18 for her place in the lineup. And you got the list of includes, which is a base and a blaster. Back side of the card, top half is about Princess Leia. Nice photo of her off to the side. And then on the right, you have a little write-up about what's happening at this point in Empire Strikes Back. Below that, nice photo of the figure that you're getting, and then just off to the side of that image is six other figures that were also available in the line at this time. And taking a look at the figure loose, overall, decent looking figure. Not the best sculpting of Princess Leia, but also not the worst that we've received. Things are looking pretty decent in there. Probably a little heavy on the makeup painting through the cheeks, but otherwise the rest of it's looking pretty decent. And you got a pretty good sculpting to the hair. Probably not the best matching of brown. Her braids are a darker brown compared to the tone of the rest of her hair on her head. A little bit lighter brown there. Traveling down the rest of the figure, uh, you know, this is that Bespin gown that we saw her in. Good detailing of that outer robe, or I, I guess you'd call it an outer robe of her dress. The, uh, whatever. It's clothing. Sculpting's looking pretty decent. And like I said, pretty representative of what we saw. And then for the rest of that gown, the design of it that they've sculpted in there seems to line up pretty well with how it looks in the movie. I think the colors are a little strong on this figure. While it may have been these colors on screen, it definitely did not look as strong or vibrant as what we're seeing here. I imagine that translucency of the color is probably something that's hard to achieve on hard plastic. So I'm really not going to be complaining about that. Aside from colors... Nice folding of the fabric throughout there, sculpting in, definitely giving a nice drape around the figure. You got the burgundy sleeves on her, decent sculpting to that, little wrinkling in the fabric of the clothing. And then down through the center of the figure, you see her costume being pretty well represented here. Once again, some nice sculpting into the plastic to represent fabric. And that burgundy or dark red coloring is staying pretty much within the lines down the center of that robe. No bleeding off to the sides or anything like that. Uh, you can't really see it here. She does have sculpted legs painted in that color of her dress. So that matches up well. That outer shell around her though is all hard plastic sculpted together. So I can't really open this up and show off the legs. But what you do see are her little feet poking out underneath. And the different colors of paint that they use for the shoes compared to the dress seems to be all holding within place. Like it's not really bleeding outside the lines. You got a little bit of flesh tone for her feet. Otherwise, the only thing I'd really say about this figure is she probably stands like maybe a quarter of an inch too short for me. Here, put her next to the Bestman Han Solo. And yes, she should be shorter than Han. I think the top of her head should be coming down to the base of his chin. Once again, another minor thing though. As for articulation... Uh, for the head, that's going to happen at the base of the neck, but you get a full 360 swivel, no nodding or anything like that, it's just a swivel joint, and same thing for the shoulders, 360 there, and you do get some swiveling, not necessarily at the wrist, but it's at the elbow area. And that's all you get with this figure. The legs seem to be sculpted together, so nothing happens, you still get a good stance out of her but they're not articulated. As for accessories, she does come with this Star Wars base that you can stick her on. Uh, I mean, I've shown this thing off a few times before. They came with the figures in this original trilogy collection line. Just got you a Star Wars logo stamped on top, and you got the little tabs that you could connect this base to other bases and have them all hooked up together. Otherwise, she comes with the Stormtrooper blaster. Obviously, we did not see her use a blaster when she was wearing this outfit, but for playability purposes, you get one included here. Really not much to say to this. Uh, I mean, it's just a gray piece of plastic. Wish they could have at least done black on it, but the sculpting of it does represent quite well a Stormtrooper blaster. So overall... You know, it's a decent figure. Nothing really fantastic, but there's really not much that you could say that, you know, give you a good cause to hate the figure. At least I don't think so. I do wish she had hinged elbows instead of just the swiveling that they have her doing within the same position. But we just weren't quite there yet with the articulation in the line at the time. I think only one figure got sold as a super articulated figure up to this point, And that was a clone trooper. And that wraps up this look at the best Ben Leia figure. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this figure in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.